4-6, matrices for reflections. But the reflection image of a point A over a line M is, well, it'll be the point A itself if A happens to be on the line of reflection, or it'll be A prime such that line M is the perpendicular bisector of segment A, A prime, if A is not on line M. Now that's a mouthful. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like visually. You see, all right, this is our pre-image right here. Now according to this definition, um, we're going to go ahead and reflect this over the y-axis. So we have to create a whole bunch of perpendicular bisectors here. We've got to find the point A prime so that if I connect A to A prime like this, the distance from here to here has got to be equal to the distance from here to here, and this segment AA prime has got to be perpendicular to the y-axis. So that's got to be a right angle. So we have to have point A prime right here. Same thing's going to happen to B. It's going to have to come over here exactly the same distance, and there we'll have B prime. Okay, right angle formed right here. C will just, it's on the x-axis right now, so it'll just travel along the x-axis the same amount and we'll get C prime. All right, so there's the visual. Now, what does this have to do with matrices? Well, as you might suspect, we can describe this triangle in a point matrix and we can do a transformation on it and it'll turn into this matrix if we just modify the uh, identity matrix just a wee little bit. Alrighty, let's take a look here briefly. Okay, I've stored the points A, B, and C into this point matrix. Negative 1, comma 3, negative 2, 2, and negative 1, 0. Now, as you can see graphically, those turned into uh, these. Now, notice all the y values are the same because we're reflecting over the y-axis. So the only thing that's going to change is your x values and they're just going to become opposite of what they were originally. So the negative 1, negative 2, negative 1 became 2, 1 and the 3, 2, 0 be stayed the same. Now, we need to think about this. From a matrix standpoint, what can I multiply this ABC matrix by that'll change the value of the x's to their opposites and leave all the y's the same. All right, so it's the same. The figures are the same size, they're the same shape, they're actually congruent. They've just been reflected and indeed reflections do preserve um, congruence. So let's go ahead and see here. Hmm. Turns out that if I were to multiply by the identity matrix, everything about this would be the same. But all I want to do is change the sign on all of the x-coordinates. So all I have to do is change this portion of the identity matrix to negative 1. Okay? Negative 1. So now, when I take negative 1 times negative 1, I'll get positive 1, and 0 times 3 is 0. So this is going to have the effect of changing the sign on all these first coordinates and leaving the second coordinates exactly the same. All right, so to formalize this up a little bit, we have a theorem. And it says that this matrix right here, the one we've used here to reflect, if you take this point matrix and multiply it, well, actually, I don't know if you call it a point matrix, this um, multiplying matrix, multiply it times tricks, you will create a reflection over the y-axis. Works every single time. Just a slight modification of the identity matrix. Remember, the x are always stored in the first row, the y-coordinates are always stored in the second row of a point matrix. So when you multiply by this multiplying matrix, Whatever you've done here will change x values, and whatever you've done here will change y values. And that's going to bring us to yet another theorem. What if we wanted to reflect x-axis? 
we reflect a figure over the x-axis, the x values will stay the same, and it will be the y values which will be reversed. So, if we want to reverse y values and leave the x values the same, the uh, matrix we would multiply would be by would be a slight alteration at once again of the identity matrix. In this case, we would leave this one. Well, we'd leave this one the same. We would change this one to a negative one. See the difference here? This will give you a reflection over the y-axis because it's going to use of the x's to their opposites. This is going to give you a reflection over the axis because the x values are going to stay the same and the y values are going to be switched to their opposites. Here we have little triangle cat. Let's see what's happening here. Okay, the vertices on cat are negative 1, positive 1, positive 1, positive 1, and t is at 0, 0. All right, now if we're going to reflect over the x-axis, that means we have to get all these perpendicular bisectors, and the x-axis has to be the bisector of all these segments, rather. Okay, so C prime is going to be right here, because if we connect C to C prime, that's going to be the same as that, and it's going to be a right angle. So there's C prime, and then you can see here, of course, A is going to come down here, and this will be A prime, and, you know, T is right on the x-axis, so we don't even need a T prime, it's just going to say T. And there we have a reflection over the x-axis. New coordinates are C prime, a prime, T prime. We're looking at, let's see here, negative 1, Changed. negative 1. So, we take a look here, and, you know, there you see it. The uh, first row of this multiplier matrix will keep the x's the same. It's the second row here, this one, the identity matrix with a negative 1 right there. All right, that is what's going to change the values of the y-coordinates, okay? 1, 0, 0, negative 1.